Good evening from Shotley Bridge. I'm Martin Jackson. I'm the vicar of the parish of Benfield Side, St Cuthbert's Church in Shotley Bridge, and priest in charge of the parish of St John the Evangelist, Castleside. There are two parishes in northwest Durham, clinging to the side of concert on the border with Northumberland. A beautiful place. It's been very cold in this area. I live on a very steep hill, so I'm glad at last that I'm able to get out again. It's been some time since we've had any online worship on our Facebook pages, and I've been asked when it might be back. I was hoping it might have been possible to get something available this morning, but as ever these days, life is just getting busier and busier. So it seemed that this would be a valuable opportunity to take some time in the evening to use the Office of Night Prayer. It's traditionally known as Compline. should be really the last prayers said before people go to bed. Well, whenever you pick this up, whether it's live or later when we post it online, I hope that you'll be able to use it. I'm simply going to be using the fairly straightforward office of Compline as it's found in the Church of England's book, Common Worship. But I'll be using a reading for today, the third Sunday of Epiphany, and also I'll be inviting you to think and to pray, along with other Christians in this week of prayer for Christian unity. There's a lot that needs to be done to overcome the divisions which we know in our world today. Divisions between and within the nations, those who find themselves at war with one another, those who seem to be at war within themselves, those who fear oppression. And also we know the grievousness of divisions between various Christians and the churches. So let's begin, even before we start, the Office of Compline itself with a collect which is given for use during this week of prayer for Christian unity, which runs from the 18th to the 25th of January. Heavenly Father, you have called us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, to continue his work of reconciliation and reveal you to the world. Forgive us the sins which tear us apart, Give us the courage to overcome our fears and to seek that unity which is your gift and your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So the order for night prayer, I'm not using all of its options, but the basic form can be found in common worship the Daily Office book on page 337. Online versions are available too. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And it's evening now. You may be joining me live or in evening yourself, I invite you in that case to look back upon the day which is passing. This is the time to recollect the things that have gone wrong, not gone as well as we might have hoped, our own shortcomings. But also it's the right time to look back on the day and consider with gratitude the blessings that we've received might be in things that have happened, in people we have met, in sharing with one another. I recall to mind our failings and confess them before God. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. 
Amen. Alleluia. Before the ending of the day, Creator of the world, we pray that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night, tread underfoot our deadly foe, that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. One of the psalms traditionally used for Compline, Psalm 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High and abides under the shadow of the Almighty shall say to the Lord, My refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust, for he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He shall cover you with his wings, and you shall be safe under his feathers. His faithfulness shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of any terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, of the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor of the sickness that destroys at noonday. Though a thousand fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand. Yet it shall not come near you. Your eyes have only to behold, to see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your refuge, and the Most High your stronghold. There shall no evil happen to you, neither shall any plague come near your tent, for he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot, because they have set their love upon me. Therefore will I deliver them. I will lift them up, because they know my name. They will call upon me, and I will answer them. I am with them in trouble. I will deliver them and bring them to honour. With long life will I satisfy them and show them my salvation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The reading I'm using is the reading appointed for the third Sunday of Epiphany, the Gospel reading. Apologies if the camera seems to be moving around. This is from St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, verse 12. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time Jesus began to proclaim, Repent! For the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father 
and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. As I said at the beginning, I was hoping that I might have uh, gone online, recorded this video this morning, uh, as opposed to my normal Sunday routine of having services at both 9 o'clock and 10.30. I'd asked my associate priest to take the service at 9 o'clock in St John's Castleside, leaving me free to prepare for our Eucharist at 10.30. But there was just too much to do, and it was good that it was so, because in our Eucharist in St Cuthbert's Church, we celebrated a baptism, and it was good to be able to do so. Uh, one of the youngest children that we've been able to baptise in recent times, as we try to get back into our normal rhythms. And his parents were the only couple whose wedding I managed to do in that first year of lockdowns in 2020. They beat the second lockdown, I think, by about two days, having had to postpone their wedding uh, because of the first lockdown. So it's good that now, with their new baby born and celebrated within our congregation, they were able to come and come together with their family, an Anglo-French family. Dad, Thibault, is from France. His family had travelled mainly from Bordeaux, but also from Paris to be with us. They'd been separated at the time of their wedding, which, again, was one of those remarkable occasions. Few actually in church, but shared online with so many and so wonderfully. The baby born is baptised as Andre Isaiah. I knew straight away there was something of what was going on, the desire to have something of both his French and his English heritage. Although then I found myself saying to Jade, his mum, well, yes, you got the Andre bit, the French, what about the Isaiah? Isn't that Hebrew? And then I thought some more. No, Isaiah is an English version of an Old Testament name, just as Andre is a French version of a New Testament name. They've cho chosen really well. And both those names get their mention in today's Gospel reading. There's a quotation from the prophet Isaiah. His name, by the way, if you want to know the Hebrew, would be Yeshayahu. So we did get the anglicised version. And he speaks of the light which is being proclaimed to people who've sat in darkness. This is Christ's proclamation of his kingdom. And as he proclaims, so he calls his disciples. The reading we've just heard is from St Matthew's Gospel. It follows on from the Gospel reading we used last Sunday, which was from St John's Gospel. Andrew figures in that as well. Andrew is one of two disciples who are the first to go to Jesus. We're not told the name of the other. So Andrew, Andre, it would be in French, is the first named disciple to have been called by Jesus. Now we see him together with Peter, his brother, Simon, as he's originally known, Peter, something of a nickname. What's in a name, we might ask? Well, a lot in those two names which we've given to this newly baptised, newest member of our church, Andre Isaiah, first of the disciples and named too, after a prophet who would declare that a virgin shall bear a son and his name shall be Emmanuel. This is to proclaim Christ. We baptise the followers of Jesus into Christ in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Whatever our name, God knows us by name. Jesus calls to us 
even as he calls to Andrew and to Simon Peter, his brother, as they work by the lake. They leave everything they have, their livelihoods behind, so that they can follow Jesus. What's the calling that we may know? In Christ, we're all called into one. A reading I haven't used today was the other one, which we've used in our Eucharists from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Paul, in that reading, is talking about baptism. And he's at a point, I think, where writing his letter, he's got a bit fed up. He's got fed up with the divisions in the church, the divisions between different people, what sets them apart. And he finds himself was saying, well, thank goodness I didn't baptise very many of you. Then he remembers who he has baptised. And there's pause for thought. He sees the factions within the congregation with which he'd sought to work. But there's only one Christ into whom we are baptised. Where do we find meaning and calling in our lives? Where do we seek to put our faith? Do we realise, as those first disciples discover, that Jesus is already there, waiting and calling to us? Some words of another prophet, Jeremiah, on which we may meditate in the peacefulness of this time. You, O Lord, are in the midst of us, and we are called by your name. Leave us not, O Lord our God. So we pray, into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wing. The Nunc Dimittis, words of Simeon, his song, as he was to take the child Jesus in his arms when brought as a baby to the temple. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Save us, O Lord, while waking and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Let us pray. We pray for this world which is Christ's, all its peoples, those who are called by baptism to life in Christ within his church. We give thanks for our calling, for the blessings which we know, for those blessings which we have known this day. We make our prayers especially at this time for the unity of the church, A litany of intercession 
with a response after each petition of Lord have mercy. In faith let us pray to God our Father, his Son Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. For the Church of God throughout the world, let us invoke the Spirit. Lord have mercy. For the leaders of the nations, that they may establish and defend justice and peace. Let us pray for the wisdom of God. Lord have mercy. For those who suffer oppression or violence. For those who know that violence inflicted upon them through war in Ukraine those who live under tyranny in Iran and Afghanistan. Those who know hardships within their own communities, let us invoke the power of the Deliverer. Lord, have mercy. That the churches may discover again their visible unity in the one baptism which incorporates them in Christ. Let us pray for the love of Christ. Lord, have mercy, that the churches may attain communion in the Eucharist around one table. Let us pray for the strength of Christ. Lord, have mercy, that the churches may recognize each other's mission, ministries in the service of their one Lord. Let us pray for the peace of Christ. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. While we may find ourselves alone in our own homes, as we join in this online video. And nevertheless, we know how we're joined into a unity, one with another. So words of the peace. If our life in Christ means anything, if love can persuade at all, or the spirit that we have in common, or any tenderness and sympathy, then be united in your conviction and united in your love with a common purpose and a common mind. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And we conclude as we join together in that prayer which Jesus gave to all who would follow him, saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And finally, let us pray for those places where we live, and for our loved ones wherever they may be, Visit this place, O Lord, we pray. Drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace. And may your blessing be always upon us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus. For the night is at hand, and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. The Lord bless us, and watch over us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us, and give us peace. Amen.
Well, thank you to everyone who's been able to be with me. Um, it may be the end of the day, but it's the beginning of the week, Sunday, the first day of the week. So I wish you well in the week to come. Uh, if you're able to join us in person in our churches, then we have midweek Eucharists on Wednesday of each week at 10 o'clock in St. John's Church in Castleside and on Thursday at 10 o'clock in St. Cuthbert's Church in Shotley Bridge. Uh, there are various other meetings going on during the course of this week and then we'll come together again next Sunday, 9 o'clock for the Parish Eucharist in St. John's Church in Castleside and 10.30 in St. Cuthbert's Church in Shotley Bridge. And do look out, you never know, there may be some more online contributions before too long. God bless you.